Welcome back everybody. So we're gonna talk about my top five pistols for 2021. And we're gonna bring out the butt hurt on this one. So these are my favorite of 2021. They're not gonna be everybody's, but I love doing these videos because one, it's really cool to think back about everything that I got to test this year, but it's also really interesting when the comments start coming in about people that agree or people that write that six paragraph essay that go into extreme detail about how wrong I was for liking one thing over another or how I forgot their favorite pistol. So the rules for this are going to be, we're gonna talk about these in no specific or particular order. And I'm gonna talk about my favorite three things and then one bad thing that I did find about them. Either it was in testing or dry firing or whatever I've done with these so far. All of these will have individual videos. So if you wanna check those out, I will leave those linked down below for you guys. And before we get rolling, people keep asking where they can get the shirts and the merchandise for the channel. That is in the link down below from Shall Not Comply. They handle all that stuff for me. Huge thank you to Johnny and Emily over there for doing that for me because that's a lot of work. So without going into anything else, let's go ahead and check out my top five for 2021. And like I said, in no particular order, we are gonna first go over the M&P 2.0 Core. Now, for those of you that don't know, the M&P 2.0 Core is their optics ready pistol and it brings a lot to the market with it. One, it's slightly more affordable than some of its counterparts. But my top three things are going to be one, the texture. Now the M&P has always had some of the best grip texture out there and that grip texture helps you get a hold of that thing, keep a hold of it and control that recoil impulse. So very good stuff going on there. Number two, and this is huge, is the overall ergonomics of this is much more of a flatter profile on that grip than say Glock, much easier for me, works better for me. I don't have to force down and forward on the muzzle like that. So that overall works very good for me. And my third favorite thing is going to be that full size pick rail right there. So I get more than one slot for those lights, lasers, whatever you wanna put up there, those accessories. And it is the 1913 size. Some manufacturers do not give you that size and you end up having to switch those little grommets in there. And I really just wish every manufacturer would go with the standardized 1913 size. So we'd have to stop changing the little inserts in all of our lights when we go from one thing to another. Now my one dig on the M&Ps is going to be that trigger guard right there. So more than once I have found myself just kind of slipping forward because of the way the trigger guard sweeps in so fast and shorter than other models out there. That's just specifically gonna be with people that have a little bit bigger hands, but you can even see in that grip, I'm almost at the end. And once we start getting some recoil impulse, I have a tendency when sweaty to start slipping forward. So that's my one thing with the M&P that I really wish was just a little bit different. And like I said, in no particular order, the second ones we're gonna be going over are the AA Rexes right here. And this is, I'm just gonna say, across the model line. So the full size, the M, and the X. There are a lot of good things going on with these things, especially the price. I wanna say I paid like 450 and then like 470 for the full size. Optics ready, good to go out of the box. So let's talk about the top three things of why I like the A-Rex. And the number one's gonna be, again, this grip texture. And they have put that texture all the way around that thing, all the way up to the reference points in here with those nice little kind of divots you can get your finger in, your thumb, get in there, hold that thing, control that recoil impulse. All of that texture helps you even if just the slightest bit to control the recoil impulse, which is absolutely what we're trying to do out there. My number two thing for the A-Rex is going to be these ergonomics. So again, much flatter profile. I seem to aim very, very naturally. And these things seem to run very naturally for me on the range. In the store, saw these, never heard of them, didn't know what they were, picked it up, pressed it out, checked that trigger a few times, and I walked out the door with two of them. And I would have walked out the door with three of them had they had the X model and I would be doing triplets with the gray right here. My third favorite thing on the A-Rex is going to be overall the look. And I know it's not about looks, but this thing just absolutely looks cool. Kind of has like a futuristic, almost like maybe art deco kind of thing going on with the lines and the texture and how they did it. And I know that's not a big deal, but still it happened to catch my eye. It flat out looks cool. Now my one dig on the A-Rex is going to be the mag release and slide release. They're usable, 
you can work them as is, but they definitely could use just a little bit more meat on them. Ability to get a little bit better of a purchase with your thumb on the mag release and the slide release would be very helpful when running this thing out there hard or from a work belt or trying to do magazine exchanges because that magazine release can just get a little bit to be a pain on the butt because it's so small on the angle of it. Um, you know, it just kind of wears on your thumb because there's not much there and where you do hit it comes into a point. So they do sell extended versions, but I just wish there was a little bit more on them from the factory. All right, so we are on the third one, but like I said, it's not really in any particular order. And this one is going to be the Nomad Defense 9F. So this is the brand new, and like I said, there are videos on all of these linked below. This is the brand new full-size Gen 5 Glock compatible from Nomad Defense. So great stuff here. A lot of ways you can do this thing if you're into setting something up your own way. So my top three things here are going to be, again, that texture, but specifically these thumb ledges right here. That gives you such a purchase on this that you can really control that recoil impulse out there in combination with that texture. Number two on this thing is going to be the fact I get to do it my way. It's like Burger King. The frames come in at like 180, 190 or right at $200 and you do what you want with it. This is a Gen 5 MOS setup on there, but you can pretty much go as stock as possible or full crazy custom and it's Gen 5 compatible and then backwards compatible as long as you use the Gen 5 or Gen 4 19 locking block and a Gen 5 17 barrel to go with that full size frame. And my third favorite part about the Nomad 9 here is going to be that duck build back strap right there. So our beaver tail right here, it's kind of got a flatter, deeper, longer profile to get up into that webbing of your hand right here. Almost looks like a duck bill when you're looking at it like that. Just gives you more ability to control that recoil impulse and it does make a difference out there, especially in the full size model. So the one thing that I would yank on the Nomad frame is going to be, they went with a single slot in the pick rail up here. So it is the 1913 size, but I really would have liked to have at least two options for placement because every light manufacturer spaces just a little bit differently from that trigger guard and would have liked to have really had the option to tighten things up maybe or loosen them out should my thumb need a little bit more room to activate that light appropriately. All right, and the fourth one is going to be the Walther PDP. Now that may be a surprise to some of you and maybe probably isn't to a lot of you haven't done the videos on this. So a lot of good stuff going on here. This thing hit the market and I'm really glad it did. And I'm really glad Walther is diving into aftermarket companies to make stuff for this as deep as they are because most manufacturers don't do that. So my favorite things about the Walther PDP is the Walther PDP. I have yet to find something that I really dislike about this pistol. Um, from the ergonomics of this to the magazine release, these absolutely insane slide serrations on the front and rear of this thing to the way it looks. And some people hate the way it looks. I like that big blocky look on this thing. So the way this thing sits here, these are the factory taller Walther sights um, and just everything else here besides obviously our light is Walther. So everything, I dig it, right? The factory trigger on this thing is good. The ergonomics are good. I usually do not like palm swells or side swells or finger grooves. The thing just feels like it was meant for my hand, almost kind of like the H&K BP9 did. So I'm not sponsored by Walther. They don't even know who I am, but I absolutely love this thing because one, I run it very, very well, and it seems to just feel absolutely great when I'm out there using it. Now, the one dig I've got on this thing, and it was kind of a big one, we got that rocky start. And that rocky start was when I went to pick this up in the store, the slide was stripped out where your optic plate goes. We saw some metal shavings in there. We tried to get the plate off and it was cross threaded in there really bad and had to be sent back in. But Walther took care of it, sent out a completely new pistol. And this is the one you see before you today. But other than that, I'm really digging the thing and I'm really digging the ability to take the frames and the slides and put them on the other frames and slides 
and the ability that we're gonna have soon with all the aftermarket stuff that Walter's working with companies on, which is absolutely awesome. Oh, and here's where the butt hurt began. So the last one in my top five that I've got to test out and currently have at this time is going to be the Taurus GX4. Now, that is probably a huge surprise to most of you, but there's a couple different reasons and no, I'm not affiliated with Taurus at all. So my top reason for this is they have made astounding strides from the G2, G3 series into the GX4 in a more budget friendly market. So not all of us have the same disposable income and the more options we have that seem to be getting a little bit better out of more budget friendly brands, I'm definitely on board with to make sure that everybody out there at every income level can have what they need for protection, fun, or whatever you choose to do with it, as long as it's not crime. So <laughs> the Taurus, my three favorite things here, the grip texture. They gave me that sandpaper grip texture and they put it absolutely everywhere. That is gonna be a huge benefit on these little tiny micros that are literally the size of my hand, right? Digging that, digging what they did with it there. Number two, it uses Glock sights. So if you wanna to go to night sights, you wanna to go to taller sights, whatever you wanna do, you want different colors, you're gonna be able to find them because they are a Glock pattern in the front and the rear, which is awesome because now you have so many more options as compared to if Taurus had done their own cut. Now my third favorite thing is going to be the trigger guard and how long it is right here. Now it looks really long to some people when they first see it, Trust me, if you have bigger hands, really gives you the ability to lock in and not slip over the front on a micro. Now I do that on a full size m and The ability to lock in my grip on this and not have to worry about sliding forward like that, that's a big deal for people that are trying to carry something nice and light in our gym shorts, but still have the ability to really control this thing. So I appreciate that. I don't know if they designed it that way on purpose, but it definitely came out good. So my one bad thing about the Taurus here is there's nowhere for an attachment. And I guess that's kind of really getting into the weeds and picking it apart because look how short that thing is, but we all know somebody will make a light for it. So if you'd have given us like, you know, a single pick slot, like way up here or something like that, um, would have been kind of cool. And I know Viridian and even Streamlight and other companies make uh, lights that kind of wrap around the trigger guard and everything. And that might be coming. I think there's actually one out already. I just don't have it to test. But that would have been cool because it seems to be that companies are making more of those subcompact or micro lights. So it would have been nice to have something like that. That's the one thing out there. Uh, the other thing I will say, just not really nitpicking it apart, send me three mags. Give me three mags and give me at least one of the 13 rounders. So that's all I'm gonna say uh, bad about the tour. Still more testing on this, but initial impressions are pretty good. All right, and my honorable mention is actually gonna be one of the things that I carry most often right now because it's still summer out, and that's gonna be the 43X MOS right here. So we're gonna get out of the way first why this isn't in the top five. And the reason is going to be because in order to get this thing in what I want as a carryable position right now for something of this size, it's a slim line. So the factory mags don't work with me and I have to go to the aftermarket and buy the Shield Arms mag so I get a 15 plus one capacity, which is absolutely awesome out of something this size. But these mags are expensive. You're gonna want a couple of them and then you gotta buy your mag release so you don't chew it up too much because it's a metal magazine on a polymer mag release so it's not factory it doesn't come out of the factory the way i would want it but that doesn't mean there's not a lot of great stuff in the 43x the reason i like the 43x it seems to be the perfect happy median i can still get my big old hands around the full grip it feels very very stable out there on the range for me i get the opportunity to run that new tlr7 sublight on here because i have a pick rail and it's direct milled to the slide for the RMSC. No more plates, none of that. It's direct milled. Now, if you wanna run something other than the Shield Arms site, you might have to buy a conversion plate like the 507K. But there are a lot of good things about the 43X MOS, but since I've gotta to go to the aftermarket for the mags I want to carry it, that is why it is an honorable mention. And I know 
the butt hurt is going crazy in the comments and someone's saying that it's Glock's perfection and this should have been number one and all that kind of stuff. But hey, this is my top five, but I am curious to know what your top five is down below or if you disagree or agree with me or want to know more on any of those things down there. Make sure you guys get subbed up, get belled up, turn those notifications down there to all on for that bell. You guys get out there, have some fun on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I'll see you guys on the next one.